Hello friends, followers and channel members. Well, in today's video, I've got something really quite exciting to showcase for you. Now, of course, many of you will already have several bits of hardware to help enhance your flight simming experience, whether it's side sticks, yoke, thrust levers, that kind of stuff. And of course, the more devices and hardware you get, the more realistic it is flying in a flight simulator at home. And I'm sure many of you will have been made aware of the mini FCU that launched on Kickstarter a few weeks ago. They sold enough products to launch the item and so units of this will start shipping later in the year. And of course, when you've got some physical hardware like this where you can interface with your desktop PC, meaning you're no longer having to use the mouse to scroll around in your screens to push buttons and things, it of course makes things much more realistic. Now, one of the things that seems to have held the Phoenix A320 back is the fact that this aircraft doesn't actually interface with external hardware very well. And there are reasons for that surrounding the ProSim license that Phoenix uses as to why that is difficult to obtain. However, in today's video, I'm going to be showcasing for you not an FCU, but instead probably one of the major things which will help with home cockpit simulation. And that is a full sized working physical McDo, the multifunctional control display unit, which is perfect for you Airbus lovers out there. And just before we go any further, yes, this physical McDo works perfectly with the Phoenix A320, as it also does with the Flyby-Wire A32NX. Now, I've had this device for a couple of weeks. The developer kindly sent me a unit to test out and evaluate, see how well they thought it worked, and to see also if there were any improvements they thought could be made to this unit. So if you have been watching my streams recently, you'll have seen I will not have been using the mouse to interact with the McDo in the Airbus. Instead, what you've seen is all the inputs being made into the McDo in the simulator, but actually I've had this McDo at the side of me, so I've been tapping away on this physical hardware, and I have to say it has been fantastic. The product comes from a company based in Spain called A320 FCU. Yes, the name may be a tad confusing, but they are also working on a flight control unit as well, which we will review when that's made available. The unit came well packaged and very well protected, and the first thing I actually noticed and kind of struck me when opening this up was actually how large this unit looks. In fact, at first I thought it may even have been an oversized unit, but when you go and check out all the dimensions and things, this is the size of a real-life McDo unit. The difference is, of course, on its own it's not filled and surrounded by all the cockpit, it is just standalone, which obviously perhaps makes it look proportionately out of place. Now, the unit's construction is made of plastic. I know many people would perhaps prefer a more metallic addition. However, that of course is designed to keep the costs down. It doesn't though feel too flimsy because of this. In fact, it still weighs one kilogram. So it is still a very sturdy unit. But yes, as you can uh, perhaps see now here on screen, everything is finely detailed, just as you would find laid out on the real flight computer unit from the Airbus. A320. The perhaps only slight difference between the real unit and this simulator unit is the line side keys. What you would find in the real unit is there is usually a little white arrow that goes down to the screen because the screen in the real unit is recessed down a little bit. So there's normally a white little line which you can now see on this image just showing a very slight difference but that's not really something that we need to be concerned with. The unit has three inputs then in order to make it work. One is a HDMI cable not included with shipping, a power cable and a USB cable. Again, it's worth noting that the USB cable is also not included with shipping, so you just get the power cable. Now, the power cable, which is a European plug, I also found to have quite a short lead on it, and I spoke to the developer who are now going to increase the size of this lead for future shipments. 
Once you've received your unit, then you'll of course naturally want to get it installed and used as quickly as possible. Thankfully, this is relatively straightforward and simple. Would you designate it plug and play? Probably not, because there are a couple of steps that you need to go through. But to be honest, if I can do it, anybody can. As anyone who is familiar with the channel will know, I am not the most technically minded person. But the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the A320 FCU website, and you will then need to head over to the download section. Now this unit requires MobiFlight so the best thing you can do is use this to ensure you download the latest version of MobiFlight and once that has downloaded go and install that on your PC. Once that's done then, the next thing you need to download is the configuration files for the aircraft you want to fly. Now this unit works with both the Phoenix A320 and the Fly-by-Wire A320, the A32NX. Now there are a couple of different files that you can download here, so make sure you select the right one. This all depends on the version of MobiFlight you have downloaded and installed, and of course which aircraft you want to fly. I downloaded the A320 Phoenix captain's side and of course you can also go and do the same for the fly-by-wire as well. You're also going to need to download the CH340 driver for Windows. A link to this is available on the dealer's website. Then that is it. Everything you need has been downloaded. Just one thing I will point out just to avoid any confusion. There is a module available to download as well in the download section on their website. You do not need this with this pre-built unit because this has already been pre-installed in the unit for you. So now we've downloaded all the files we need. Obviously, you will need to unzip those. There you can see I've got the fly-by-wire, the Phoenix. We've got the Mobi flight connector, that's already now done and installed. Also make sure you install the driver. The next thing to do is then actually start setting up the unit so it communicates with Mobi flight. The first thing to do is to connect the unit to your PC via USB. You don't need the power cable at this point or the HDMI cable. Simply connect it and it will confirm the PC has recognized it when you see two flashes of the white LED inside the unit. The next thing to do then is tell MobiFlight which configuration to use, which aircraft you're going to be flying. So select the file that you downloaded previously. For me, usually it's the Phoenix, so we will select that. And then it will also let you know that it has found the unit. Now it's done this for me automatically because I've been using this for a little while. I will show in a moment how you will sort of reflash and install the device into MobiFlight. When this window comes up, however, you simply select the McDo unit and assign it. And that is now clicked OK, and this is all working. And if I hit the test button, you should see all the lights on the box starting to flash as it runs around and tests it. That tells us that the unit is installed, it's connected with mobile flight, and it's now ready to work. Sometimes, however, it will for some reason fail to find the unit and it will tell you that it just needs to read the firmware information from the unit once again. So if you go to MobiFlight modules and click on the update firmware, it will then run that for you and just get that reinstalled. It only takes a couple of minutes and sometimes if this fails it's worth just running it two or three times and eventually it will work. I have had this happen to me on a couple of occasions but I've never had to rerun that update firmware more than twice. At this point then you can now connect the power to your McDo unit and then once you do that you'll see that the screen all lights up albeit it will now be blank for the moment. Then we can add the HDMI cable and as soon as you do that your PC should recognize that another screen has been added because you've added another output. At this point it will probably just display your desktop just like mine is doing now and you can see that that is now a third screen which we will then use and set up once we're in the flight simulator. So now I'm going to launch Flight Simulator 2020 and it is worth noting that MobiFlight needs to be up running and connected to the unit prior to Flight Simulator running. I've not had any success with getting the McDo unit and MobiFlight communicating with the simulator if I launch it after the simulator is running. Not entirely sure why, perhaps it's just a little quirk, but yep, Flight Simulator is the last thing you want to run. 
So once inside your aircraft, the first thing you're going to need to do is pop out the screen for the McDo. This is achieved by selecting the right alt key on your keyboard. So the mouse cursor turns into a little magnifying glass, select that and the screen will pop out. The next thing to do then with this is to drag it all the way over to the McDo screen. And you can see that now appearing. In order to make this full size, you don't need to try and redrag it to get it to fit. All you need to do is make sure you've just clicked the top of the menu bar. So that is the window that is currently active. And on your keyboard, select the left Alt and then Enter key. And that will then automatically fill it to the screen size. Any interaction you now make here in the simulated cockpit will, of course, be replicated on screen. The final step then is just to bring MobiFly back up and then simply click run. It tells you at the bottom of the status bar that the software is running and that now means it's connected both to the simulator and the McDo module. So anything you do on, the, uh, on your physical McDo should now work in your aircraft. And that is it. As you can see, everything that we select is done both in the sim and of course, in uh, the screen represented on the book too. And this also, what I really like about it is the fact that there is little to absolutely no lag. As soon as I press it, information is sent pretty quickly. And so you can see everything has just been brought in as it would be if you actually used the mouse button to select it. There's no delay with the screen or anything like that. You can just see as soon as you press the button, it's pretty much there straight away. So really loving the fact that this is now so much easier than having to use the mouse. It also means that, for instance, when checking things like the route, I don't have to be looking at both the screen in the simulator. I've got my physical McDo at the side of me and I can just be looking through the entire route and you can see the navigation display updating as we do it. So, so many benefits and just having a tactile feel is really nice and makes that home cockpit much more realistic. In fact, this physical McDo really came into its own on a stream we did quite recently. For those of you who saw the London Stansted flight where we were heading into Stansted on a very, very busy night on VATSIM, air traffic control was giving us so many different things to do with regards to holds and procedures. And it just meant that we would have had to be doing so much sort of focused down here in the box to pop stuff in, using the mouse to select things. Well, Having the McDo at the side of me meant that following the instructions was simple and straightforward enough, but actually inputting them into the computer was far, far easier than if I hadn't got this physical McDo. So when flying on Vatsim in crowded airspace, having to do lots of things, changing procedures, entering holes, exiting holes, etc., it really was nice. Also, things like entering the engine out, SID information becomes much quicker and simpler as well. The performance of the unit, I've not noticed any slowdown in frame rates or anything like that. And as I've already said, the actual speed at which the information is transmitted, the moment you press a button on the physical box, it's instantly there in the simulated box as well. So working absolutely flawlessly with both the Phoenix aircraft and the fly-by-wire A32NX. The only other minor issue I had was the screen itself. It's a screen which, unless you're looking at it pretty much directly above, can be at times quite difficult to see. Here I had to faff around a little bit just with the brightness settings and contrast to try and get it to display the colours as vibrantly as the real McDo. Sometimes greens, blues and whites get intermingled a couple of times, so you perhaps want to go around and play with those until you are satisfied on screen of course you can see what mine was finally set to now I spoke to the developer about this and they said that the screen they chose for this unit was there to keep costs down however they are now looking at adding a second option with a vastly improved screen which is probably going to cost a little bit more but keep an eye on the developers website as this premium upgrade edition should be available very soon you can check out the website for yourself where you can 
buy this unit at a320fcu.com and there is a link in the video description as well down below if you want to get further information. The current cost of this McDo Airbus A320 desktop edition that you've seen here in this video is €329 Euros plus VAT. It's on discount as well at the moment, so now is a great time to pick up a bargain if this is something you are interested in. Guys, please do let me know in the comments down below what you think of this unit. Is it something that you would look to add to your home desktop simulation to add that immersion? I can tell you that now I've got it, I definitely will never fly without it. It makes things so much easier to do. It's much more realistic. I love having that tactile feel next to me. It also means that I can quickly access information rather than having to pan around with the mouse. And so, yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. Highly recommended on my part. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do leave a like. And of course, if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell as well so you don't miss any future videos or live streamed content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.